has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly surrounding true crime videos. I do unsolved disappearances, mystery, murders, psychological experiments, everything along those lines with a little bit of like university and lifestyle related videos sprinkled in where I can. I am back today with the final instalment of my true crime week. So I'm sure you've already seen by now, but if you haven't, I was uploading a video every single day this week from my like true crime request list basically um so if you haven't already seen all those there's a whole week's videos uh, over on my channel so you definitely go check those out and today we are ending true crime week on a psychological experiment video and this is one that i've had so requested ever since i've started doing these on my channel it's very very well known in my like case i was always quite surprised when you guys were requesting this because it's kind of from a psychology student perspective it's like drilled into you from a young age so i'm sure a lot of you especially if you have done psychology have heard of this so we're going to be talking about uh, the milgram obedience study which is very very controversial it's fascinating to me i think it's absolutely fascinating to everyone and that's why it's so controversial so if you want to hear a little bit about this controversial psychological experiment then keep on watching and we should just get started so like i said milgram's study of obedience was possibly one of the most notorious and controversial psychological experiments in psychology's history it's still referred to to this day it's a huge one so like i said i'm sure the majority of you have heard of either the experiment or at least stanley milgram before and again if you have studied psychology at any level i'm sure this has been drilled into you because it's become quite a pivotal piece of, of evidence really an experiment that's so pivotal in our understanding of the effects of obedience and all things related to that so milgram was a well-known psychologist who was working at yale university at the time where he decided that he wanted to kind of look into why some of the atrocities that occurred kind of throughout world war ii happened why the soldiers would carry out these sort of awful acts you know like things like genocide there were all these awful war crimes that a lot of soldiers were kind of accused of and he wanted to develop an understanding or an explanation at least as to why they would carry out these awful acts because they obviously didn't want to do them themselves any accused soldier at the time would kind of say that they were simply just following orders they didn't necessarily want to do any of these awful things but they would have or they felt the need that like they had to do these awful things because their superiors had told them to milgram began his kind of research into his study in july of 1961 and then by 1963 he'd kind of developed this main focus for his research or at least he wanted to understand um mainly why nazi soldiers would follow all the nazi propaganda and things despite the fact obviously that they didn't really didn't really believe in it most of them or many of them claimed afterwards that they were kind of doing it because they had to so he was kind of wanting to develop this understanding he advertised for participants on the yale university campus they weren't all students it was just kind of anyone it was just the most public place for him to advertise for these participants and he advertised only for male participants who would be interested in taking part in a study of learning which is what he called it it was um obviously as you can imagine starting off quite early quite deceitful and that's what we'll get into a little bit um as we go further in in total there were 40 male participants that they gained aged between like 20 and 50 years old and they were all told that upon like entry upon signing up and turning up to the experiment they would receive four dollars and fifty cents so the reason this has become one of the most controversial studies in history because uh, basically, like I said, it was so deceitful. They throughout weren't aware of what they would be doing um, and you'll understand as I go throughout, but yeah, from flat out, they didn't really tell them what they'd be doing exactly and also just how potentially upsetting it would become for them. So the participants would take part in this experiment where they were taken into a room, it was kind of like two rooms inside the Yale University building next to each other, there were adjacent rooms. They'd be taken in by an experimenter, which was actually an actor who was in kind of like a lab coat, he was a very stereotypical experimenter look and the participants had no reason to suspect that they weren't experimenters so basically they were trying to create this typical authoritarian figure and these actors would be the ones kind of giving them the instructions of what they had to do throughout so they'd take the participants 
into these rooms. Um, they were paired up randomly, allegedly, but in reality, what the experimenters did was secretly kind of fix the draw so that one participant would always be paired with a confederate who was kind of like, like an actor, I guess. He was in on the study working with the actual experimenters. In these pairs, one participant and one confederate would be randomly assigned the role of teacher and learner. And I say randomly in air quotes because they were actually fixed again. The experimenters rigged it so that the confederate who was working with the experimenters would always get the learner role, whereas the participants who were unaware of this would always be given the teacher role. The experimenters would then take the confederate who was playing the learner role into the next room and the teacher, so the participant, would be sat in front of kind of like a switchboard and a little microphone and the experimenter says to them that you will be talking to the other participant in the next room through this intercon system. The teacher was told that he would kind of be teaching the the learner through like a recall task through the intercom system so you'd have to basically ask him. The teacher would read out a word and then tell the learner to select the matching pair word out of three options that followed. The teacher was then told that any time the other person got an answer wrong they would have to give them an electric shock on the switchboard in front of them. So the switchboard had a number of different switches. They increased in strength. So it started off at 15 volts, which is kind of like a minor slight shock, not really anything too painful. And then it would go up to 450 volts, which is like lethal. They were labeled like danger and things like that. So there was kind of like a warning to show them just how painful they would become. So to the teacher's knowledge, every time the other person got an answer wrong, they would have to give them an electric shock because they were allegedly sat next door in a chair attached to electrodes. Now bearing in mind while they were carrying out this task, the authority figure, so the experimenter, would be sat behind the participants of the teacher at a desk kind of seemingly just doing paperwork. So they kind of wanted to create this sense that there was always this authority figure telling them what they had to do, just keeping an eye on them. As the experiment began, the confederate in the other room allegedly getting uh, electric shocks given to them they would kind of intentionally get a lot of the answers wrong just because they wanted to obviously make them think that they were giving them electric shocks. And then as the strength of the vaults increased, the learner would kind of become more and more like loud in their reactions, like they would shout or scream or something in pain, obviously as the vaults increased. And because they were in adjacent rooms, the participant who was administering the electric shocks would obviously be able to hear each of their reactions. I think there were clips where at one point sort of when they go through the uh, strengths of shocks, there would be a point where they would be screaming and then all of a sudden they'd go quiet. So it was kind of supposed to give the teacher the impression that they'd stop responding, that they were, I don't know, unconscious or dead or something. And as you can imagine, this was extremely upsetting and distressing for all of the participants. So they became more and more reluctant each time they had to administer the shock because like I said, they were under the impression that this person was in pain. So the experimenter set up this kind of set of what they called prods. So whenever a participant would become reluctant or refuse to give the shock, they would give a number of prods. Um, throughout kind of each time. So I have a list of them here. The experimenter would first ask them to, to please continue, kind of calmly. This was then followed by, the experiment requires you to continue. If they continue to refuse, they then say, it's absolutely essential that you continue. And then finally, you have no other choice but to continue. So it became sort of more and more demanding more authoritarian in their prods. So this, like I said, became so distressing for the participants because they thought they had no choice but to give these electric shocks to another hard, well, innocent person, um, which obviously was so upsetting. Like some even got to the point where they were crying. They didn't want to continue, but they felt like they had to. The experiment, as you can imagine, is very controversial on ethical grounds because it didn't give the impression that the participants had their right to withdraw from the experiment, which is obviously one of the most basic ethical guidelines that you have to follow nowadays when you're carrying out a psychological experiment. So they didn't explicitly say like, oh, you can't leave. But because of their prod and the way they were doing it, they kind of gave the participants no other impression, like they felt like they had to stay. Obviously the main aim of this study was to just see how much, or the extent to which uh, a person could harm another person because of an authority figure being encouraging and um, telling them to do so despite it upsetting them personally. In total, 65% of the participants administered the maximum shock level, which is, like I said, it was labelled as lethal. Um, the participants stopped responding, so it kind of gave the impression they were unconscious. So 65% of them went to this point, and that means only 14 people in total 
uh, stopped before then. Throughout the entirety of the experiment, participants showed kind of open signs of anger and frustration towards the experimenter because like I said, these prods were kind of making them feel like they had no choice. After each of the trials, the participants were given like a debrief session, which again is one of the most basic psychological ethical guidelines that you have to follow. So they kind of done this in hopes of minimizing any of these psychological damages that they'd cause these participants. And what was surprising is considering just how distressing they all became, like I know personally how I'd react in that situation, I would be so distraught at the thought of having to shock another person. And like I said, people were crying, people were screaming, like they were frustrated, they were lashing out, they were refusing to do it, but then they still continued because they thought they had no choice. So it was extremely upsetting for them. So despite all this anxiety and panic throughout the experiment, 84% of the participants, when they were asked after the experiment, like a couple weeks afterwards, 84% said that they were happy they took part, they were glad they took part in it. So what made this experiment so controversial was not only the questionable kind of ethical approach in terms of allowing participants to become so distressed and not letting them leave and everything, but also because of the answers it provided. The experiment ultimately proved what it kind of set out to investigate. It kind of just showed that the presence of an authority figure and the reassurance of hierarchy throughout can just com and consistently encourage compliance and obedience to some of the, the most, the highest extreme of acts, so some of the most harmful acts on other human beings. It was clear that many, if not all, of the participants at some point protested against the task, saying that it was something that they didn't want to do and they didn't agree with and they wouldn't continue. But then the majority, like I said, ultimately did continue to seemingly harm another human being. So this experiment, despite not following all of the ethical guidelines that we need nowadays, and even just mor it's morally questionable, it has provided a solid understanding, or at least a basis, for our understanding of why human beings can carry out such atrocities like those carried out in World War II just because of the effect of authorities. So yeah, that's kind of everything. I know this was kind of a shorter video, but it is very, very kind of straight to the point. It's so obvious, but also it's so well known. So it's literally kind of one of the easiest things to talk about because it is just so clear. Like there is everything questionable about it, but it does provide such an interesting basis for our knowledge today. So I hope you guys found this interesting. Uh, let me know down below sort of what videos you want me to film. If you want me to film any more experiment videos and leave specific requests down below because I'm always looking for cases to research. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and I hope you have found the entire of True Crime Week interesting and I will see you guys soon for another video. Bye.